Atta. start today in a more traditional way. In fact, it has become a fine tradition on Art Attack that at least once in every series we do something really messy. <laughs> Come and have a look at this. Take a piece of paper, any colour you like, nice and big, and starting at one of the side edges, fold a strip that's roughly the width of a ruler, and then turn the paper over and fold it back on itself, again roughly the width of a ruler. And keep doing this all along your paper, each time turning the paper, folding it over back on itself, roughly the width of a ruler. Now, I think this is called a concertina fold, where you just fold, turn the paper, fold, turn the paper, fold, and eventually you run out of paper. And then just lay it down and let's open it out, and there you have some zigzag peaks and troughs that run from the top of your paper to the bottom of your paper. And then, the traditional messy bit. Here we go. Take three different coloured bottles of poster paint and take your first bottle and just gently squeeze a line of paint across those zigzag folds. And then another line across the folds. And again, and do about five lines going from one side of the paper to the other. You don't want thick lines, so move your bottle quite quickly. And then take another colour, and this time go diagonally across the paper. And it is, I'm just squeezing gently to get a nice thin line out and moving my bottle nice and quickly. And then take the third colour and do the same again in the other direction. So across the other diagonal. And again, I'm just going to do four stripes this time, I think. Four or five stripes should do it. You don't have to do stripes, you could do swirls or squiggles, you could experiment. I'm just going to do thin stripes for this demonstration. Right, here we go. This is the tricky bit, so bear with me. You have to just push in those zigzag folds back on themselves like that, nice and slowly, to trap all of that paint inside those grooves. And then just pick it up, keep it nice and level, and just gently squeeze the paint. I can feel it all squelching in there. You know I love doing this sort of thing. And then just turn it round the other way and squeeze it gently, not too hard, otherwise you'll find it all flies out and hits you in the face. And just, just squeeze it gently in there, nicely together, and then gently and carefully place it down and watch this. Open it out again. Whoa, look at that! That is one fantastic zigzag paint attack. Isn't that a brilliant effect? And then you just put it to one side and let it dry. Not bad for a mess, eh? An artistic mess. And when it's dry, just turn it over and take some glue and just put a dab of glue down each of these side strips, just very carefully, otherwise all your paint might crack off, so do it very gently. I'm just doing it quite quickly to show you. And then take another piece of card or paper as a backing card, this time a different colour, and just just before you mount it, just place it above the backing paper and just gently squeeze it together so it just raises a bit in the middle and then press it down like that. Keep your fingers there until it's dried and when it's dry, lift it up and there you have a zigzag paint attack that's well and truly mounted. I'll just move that around so you can see that effect. Isn't that brilliant? And of course, you can square the paint out in any way you like, swirl, squiggles, and you can even mount it in a couple of different ways. What about this? I call this a fan mount, and you just squeeze the edges of the zigzag folds together, glue them in position, and then just fan it out and mount it on a sort of diamond-shaped piece of card. Well, it's just a square turn sideways, isn't it? And what about this? If you pull those two side folds together, or the side strips, and just glue them together, like that, then you have this sort of 3D effect that stands up by itself. I think that's a brilliant effect. What do you think? 
yeah, try it yourself, a zigzag paint attack. Oh, what a fantastic way of using good old paper and paint. Zigzag fold your paper, squirt on your paint, gently squeeze it together, open it and let it dry. But do us a favour, put some newspaper or something down first so you don't make a mess. Do you want to see my zigzag and paint picture? <gasps> oh, I think I'd better have another go. <clears throat> for a big art attack. Just cut this. Nice picture, mate. Oh, thank you very much. But uh, what is it? I'm going to show you something that's never been seen before on telly. My bedroom when I was 10. In the dark. Now, OK, I know you can't actually see anything, so let's open the door and shine some light into the bedroom. And that's where this stuff comes in. 
chalk. Now just watch this. To draw an open door in the dark, just draw three sides of the door in chalk. And you notice I'm doing the top edge of the door and the bottom edge of the door slightly slanted. And the more you slant it, the more open the door is. And when the door is open, the light starts to flood in. And light floods in in straight lines. So just flick the light out, flick the chalk like that in straight lines, radiating from all directions away from the door. OK, so now we've got some light in the room. Now we can see some of the objects actually in the room. But, you know, we'll only be able to see down one side of the object because the light is shining from the door down the side of the object that's nearest to the door. Now, I used to have my bed over this side of the room and I used to have round knobs on the top like this. This was the headboard and this is the side of the bed that's facing the open door. And there's the pillow, so the light is just shining down the edge of the pillow like that. And there's the sheets. Again, the light is just shining down the edge of the sheets nearest to the door. And then down the bottom here, we've got the footboard. Again, it had just a little round knob on the top. Now, because these are rounded edges, I'm just going to smudge them a little bit because the light will be shining slightly round the corner of those sheets. And next to my bed, there was a bedside table. So again, I'm just going to do the light shining down one side of the table. And it had round knobs on it. So I'm just going to draw these half knobs in the chalk. And there was a lamp on the table. Again, just half a lamp. And on top of the lamp, there was a light shade. And again, they were slightly rounded. So I'm just going to smudge them ever so slightly because the light was just picking up that rounded edge. And from the ceiling, I had a light, and that also had a light shade on it, which was also rounded, so I'm just going to smudge that slightly. As you see, the light just creeps around those rounded edges. And down here on the floor, when I was really young, I used to have a rocking horse. So if I just do the light shining on those edges nearest the door, the door's over here, it's shining onto the horse. So I'm just going to do the back of the horse and that it is, and just the top of its tail there, and then its neck under here, nice long legs on it. But I'm not really drawing anything properly. I'm not completing anything. I'm just doing the white chalk down one side, the side that's nearest the light. There it goes. And there it is, my bedroom when I was 10 in the dark. Try it yourself, a bit of black paper, a little bit of chalk and shine some light into your bedroom. Now that is a really effective tip, using white chalk on black to let the light in. Shall I let the light in on where I sleep? <gasps> well, I sleep in here, don't I? So there! <laughs> Hello, my name is Ben. I cut out foil shapes and made my picture. Hello, my name is Helen. And my name is Sally. We had an art attack with foil. Hello, my name is James. And my name is Mark. We used pieces of foil cut into shapes and stuck them down to make our picture. Ah, good art attacks. And, you know, isn't this a great art material? Kitchen foil. And you don't need a lot of it to create a great effect. Try this. Cut a square of cardboard from a cardboard box that's roughly 10 centimetres square. And then from the same cardboard box, cut some thinner strips that are about one centimetre wide. And then just place those thinner strips around the edge of your cardboard square and the idea is to create a raised cardboard frame around that square. And when you're happy with the position of those strips, just glue them into place. 
and when it's dry, you'll have something that looks like that, a raised cardboard frame. Then take another piece of cardboard and on it, draw one of your initials. Now, I'm going to draw the letter N, and it's a good idea to draw it in really thick, chunky lettering, and you have to make it the right size to fit inside that cardboard frame that you've just made. So, if you make it too big, you can always trim it up when you cut it out, or you could measure it when you're drawing it. But I'm just guessing it just to show you. And look what I'm doing here. I'm just putting these little triangular tips on like that to make it look a bit fancier. And it doesn't have to be perfect at this stage because you can neaten it up when you cut it out. And that's what I've done here. And you have something that looks like that. And then turn it over and put some glue on the back there like that. And then take your raised cardboard frame and place your initial inside. And you see what I've done here? I've made the initial the right size to fit inside the frame really snugly there, and so it doesn't actually touch the frame itself. Then take some PVA glue, you know, the ordinary school glue in the squidgy bottles, and slop your PVA glue all over your initial and all over the background and all over the frame. And again, you don't have to be neat. You don't have to be neat with any of this because I'm going to cover the whole thing in a minute. And when you've covered it all in glue, you take your kitchen foil and place that over the top. And watch this technique. You just press the kitchen foil down into and around your initial and the shape of the frame. And see what happens? You start to see the shape of the initial and the frame through the kitchen foil. Just press it down into all the nooks and crannies. And if you've got any foil left over at the edges, just fold that over on the back and just neatly tape that into place like that. And when you've neatened up the whole of the back, it'll look something like that. Look at that. You see this raised initial and the raised frame, and on the back, it's nice and neat. And then take some poster paint, plop a small amount of water into the poster paint. Don't water it down too much. And then just paint your poster paint all over your initial and all over the background and all over the frame. Just slopping it on. And when you've covered the whole thing in slightly watered-down poster paint, the good bit. Take a piece of kitchen roll or tissue paper or loo roll and just dab the wet paint off the raised surface. Get all that paint, that wet paint, off the frame and your initial. Leave it on the background, just take it off that raised surface. Do it very carefully. And when you've taken the wet paint off all the raised surfaces, it'll look something like this. Look at that. There it is, your own kitchen foil plaque. And you can do your whole name in exactly the same way. Look at that, same technique. I think that looks brilliant. Or you could even try this. Do a very simple design, draw it onto the cardboard first, and then stick down the thin strips and cardboard shapes in the same way I've just done, and then cover it in your kitchen foil in the same way, paint it, take the paint off the raised surfaces, and it looks something like that. Or what about this? Cut the whole thing to the shape of your design, and it looks like that. And that's exactly what I've done with this one as well. Try it yourself. Kitchen foil plaques. And I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!